Hey guys, Zerdex here, and once again, I have some great Digimon news for you guys. Some of it's a bit late, and I'm sorry, but I was busy with another project, which I will talk about in a future video. The first news we have is about the new Jogress, Ragnar Lordmon. And as you can tell by the name, this guy is a big deal. Well, here is the picture of this new Jogress Digimon. It looks very badass and might be one of the most edgiest Digimon designs that I have ever seen. And I say that in a good way. Before I talk more about this Jogress Digimon, I want to talk about the two Digimon who Jogress or DNA Digivolve together to become Ragnar Lordmon. The first Digimon is Zubamon's Mega Level, Durandamon. For those who don't know or cannot remember, Durandamon is a Legend Arms type Digimon. It's a Digimon that can transform into a weapon. It's said that this Digimon transforms into the ultimate Holy Blade. It evolved by honing its sword to its best ability and attained data on the legendary swords found in mythology and video games. It has strength that puts it among the strongest Legend Arms capable of transforming into swords. It is said that wielding Durandamon in sword form will surely bring about victory and that its slashing attacks are fierce enough to cut through any sort of defense. Although there have been records that only the strongest of the Legend Arms Digimon capable of transforming into a shield is able to withstand Durandamon's attack. As we can see, Durandamon has become a giant sword that Ragnarlordmon is holding. So already we have a powerful Digimon that is Ragnarlordmon's evolution. The second Digimon that's part of Ragnarlordmon Lordmon's evolution is Ludomon's mega level, Brywell Ludromon. I think I said that right. Anyways, this is its name. This is the mega level of Ludomon. So, Zubamon and Ludomon's mega levels both Jogress into Ragnar Lordmon. And in the past, I did guess that these two would probably have a Jogress with one another. And it seems that I was right. Again, for those who don't know, Brywell Ludromon is a mega level legend arms type Digimon like Durandamon. However, instead of transforming into a sword, it instead becomes a shield. Its entire body is composed of shields and has taken the form of a dragon. I love this design because it's so unique. A dragon Digimon created by shields and fire. Just like Durandamon, this Digimon attained the data of legendary shields from legends and video games and evolved to become the shield boasting absolute hardness, one that cannot be scratched by any attack. While appearance wise it seems to be made from red digizoid, the true extent of its hardness cannot be analyzed and might be or is stronger than Red Digizoid. Although Bryweludramon may be the strongest shield, it seems that its barriers have been broken and bested before by its nemesis Durandamon. So Durandamon and Bryweludramon are both rivals that transform into a sword and shield. Therefore it makes perfect sense why these two would get a Jogress. And as you can see, Bryweludramon has become a giant dragon head that covers Ragnarlordmon's arm. Now I'll talk about Ragnar Lordmon. In the past, Kenji Watanabe had showed us Ragnar Lordmon without confirming who it really was. And I think I made a tweet about the image and how it might have been a Jogress of both the Legend Arms type Digimon. The first thing that comes to mind when I saw this new Digimon was that it's very detailed and badass. This Digimon might be the most detailed and possibly have the best and edgy design from any of the Jogress Digimon. I should have expected as much as it's a Jogress of two powerful mega level legend arms type Digimon. As I said before, Durandamon has become a giant sword and looks to be a great sword. This sword should be able to cut through almost anything and I believe this sword is more powerful than Omnimon's Greymon sword. While Bryweludramon has become a shield in the shape of a dragon's head, we can even see the teeth of the dragon and how the mouth is closed. The shield looks so unique. I love the design and the detail. The shield is huge. It covers more than half of Ragnar Lordmon's body. While the shield is designed to be defensive, I'm sure Ragnar Lordmon can use this shield as an offensive weapon. As the shield is so large, he could use it to slam it into opponents. It could open the dragon mouth and use it to bite its enemy or shoot fire onto the enemies with the dragon's mouth. This might sound ridiculous, but what if the shield can also be used as a booster that increases its speed? 
as the top of the shield does seem to resemble boosters, fire could shoot out from the top of the shield, giving Ragnar Lothmann a speed boost. Now, that might not happen, but it would be cool if they did decide to give him something like that. As for defense, well, it's a massive shield made from the Digimon with the greatest defense. I doubt simply anyone will be able to even scratch the shield. Also, the shield can cover and protect his body from many attacks. It could simply place the shield in front of itself and possibly use the head or sword to counterattack against any enemy. Maybe the shield can create a barrier over Ragnar Lordman. Braywell Udramon and its ultimate were able to create shield barriers to protect themselves. So, Ragnar Lord Mon might be able to do the same. It even has small shields placed on the dragon's head. So maybe those shields will shoot out from the dragon's head and create a barrier surrounding Ragnar Lord Mon, protecting it from any attack. As you can see, the hand that's holding Drandamon's weapon form either seems to be made up of light energy or is just covered in light energy. We can also see some of its horns being covered or made up of light energy. But it seems that while Ragnar Lordman has light energy in one hand because of Durandamon's sword, he also has fire all over his cape and arm because of Braywell Udramon's shield. Ragnar Lordman has the power of two elements, light and fire. If we look at this Digimon's shoulders and chest, we can see what looks to be a head, eyes and teeth. Now, I don't believe it can open the mouth on the shoulder or chest. It seems to have this face type armor all over its body. We can see it has something similar on its hips. However, this one does not have any horns and it has an eye and a teeth, but it looks less demonic than the one on its shoulder and on the chest. It then has the same face for both the knee and the feet. Both have eyes and a horn. Now, I wonder why this Digimon has so many faces all over its body. Maybe it's simply a designer's choice or it might be part of this Digimon's profile. We don't know yet. I wonder how difficult it was to design this Digimon as the designers had to make the Jogras more badass and detailed than the previous two Digimon, Durandamon and Braiweludramon. And I don't know if it's me, but this Digimon's body reminds me of Omnimon and Alphamon mixed together. It has a face that's similar to Alphamon, while the whole body is more similar to Omnimon. And I think it would make sense why this Digimon looks a lot like Omnimon. Because War Greymon and Metal Gururumon simply became the hands and weapons of Omnimon, while the body was formed by another power. For Ragnar Lordman, Durandamon and Braiweludramon became the weapons just like Wargreymon and Metogrurumon and possibly the body was formed because of the fusion just like Omnimon. I do believe Ragnar Lordman is way stronger than Omnimon and possibly even stronger than Alphamon. And this is because firstly, legend arm type Digimon are rare and powerful. It's said that whoever wields them has the destructive power and that's even with rookie level legend arms type Digimon. So, we have mega level legend arm type Digimon that become the strongest shield that can defend against almost anything and one that becomes the strongest sword that can cut almost anything. Jogras into a new Digimon who has the power of both while wielding those two weapons. This all makes Ragnar Lordman be a very overpowered Digimon. Anyways, that's what I believe. I do love this guy's design and maybe it might be too detailed and too edgy, but I think it's perfect for what it is. Just imagine how overly detailed and edgy Ragnar Lordman's X evolution would look like. We don't have any information about this Digimon's profile, but when we do, I'll talk about it in a future video. What do you guys think about its design? Is it overly detailed and edgy or do you find it perfect? And do you think this is the best Jogris design? I wonder if many new Digimon will start looking overly detailed like this guy. It would be great to see some simple looking mega level Digimon from time to time. We also have news of another Jogris type Digimon. And this is a Jogris of Rosemon and Lotusmon. The Jogras' name is Raflesima. Again, I don't know if I said it right or not, and here's the name. When I first heard about Lotusman and Rosemon becoming a Jogras, I kind of expected a new plant-like female Digimon, like this Digimon from the Olympus 12. So I was surprised with the Jogras looking a lot like Rosemon. But I do love the design, it's so elegant. Also, 
I thought this Digimon would wear a fan service like outfit, similar to Rosemon. However, surprisingly, she's wearing a big red dress and it doesn't rely on fan service. I do like the design more than Rosemon's burst mode, which was basically a color swap. It seems to be a Jogress that's mainly for Rosemon. Maybe the reason why this Jogress has Rosemon as the dominant Digimon is because in the next movie, we might see Mimi's Rosemon become this new Digimon. And I know this is a crazy theory, but just hear me out. It kind of makes sense because if Toy wanted another adventure movie and they wanted the other adventure kids to have their own powerful Digimon to match Omnimon, a Jogress level Digimon, what would they do? Create their own Jogress Digimon. And so maybe the rest of the adventure kids might have their own Jogress level Digimon. What if Vikeman and Hercules Kabuterimon also get a Jogress level Digimon? Would you guys like to see the adventure cast get their own Jogress level Digimon? And possibly War Greymon and Metal Gururumon get their own separate Jogress level Digimon as well instead of becoming Omnimon. That's a crazy thought, but it would be cool to see. And we also have the profile for this Digimon. It's a mega level fairy type Digimon, said to be the largest flower in the digital world. While its appearance is so beautiful that it enraptures all who lay eyes upon it. The stench it emits is out of this world. There are a number of people who fell for Raphael Simon's beauty at first sight and sought to find it again after a single glance. However, Raphael Simon's lifespan is short and its life process will cease after just just several days have passed. Because of the extremely low likelihood of being able to catch sight of Raphael Simon, it is also known as the miraculous flower. Despite its circumstances, Raphael Simon never expressed any pessimism about it losing its life, constantly yearning to live a normal life and dancing elegantly till its very last day. Its special move is Ballet Gun. It fires its sleeves like a cannon while utilizing the large flower petals that dance around it as reflectors, reflecting its shot so that no enemy can escape and whistle it. It sheds its scales from its body that then latch onto the opponent causing them to lose consciousness and turn into Raphael Simon's servants and that's her profile. Her story is very dark and tragic. It might be one of the most tragic profiles I have read for a Digimon. She only has a couple of days to live and it makes it more tragic that this Digimon simply wants to have as much fun as possible. I'm shocked that they added this type of description for this Digimon and I believe the only other Digimon to have a short lifespan is Chaosmon. I believe they gave the short lifespan because this Digimon was inspired by a flower that only survives a few days. Who else was surprised at the fact that this Digimon has such a short lifespan. And on to the final piece of news. It's about a Digimon Chinese app game called Digimon Encounters. It's been a long time since we last heard about this Digimon game. I think it's been almost a year. But after that, we had literally heard no news about this game. Well, finally, we get some news. And the first major thing is that there is a new Digimon introduced in this game. First, we have had its silhouette, but we finally get an image of this Digimon, and its name is Bulkomon. It's like how Erismon was the new Digimon for Digimon Re-Arise. Bulkomon is the main Digimon for Digimon Encounters. We also get to see its evolution line. Its champion level is Pale Drummond. Its ultimate level is Crisp Pale Drummond, and we only get to see a silhouette of its mega level. I really do like the ultimate level for this guy. It looks different and I like the eyes design. I cannot really tell if it's a wolf type Digimon, but I am starting to see a pattern here. Many Digimon start off as beast-like Digimon, but then for their ultimate and mega level, they become humanoid type Digimon. And it seems that this Digimon's mega level will be a humanoid. I think we have too much humanoid mega level Digimon, and it would be great to see more beast type mega level Digimon. This game is a collaboration between Bandai Namco Shanghai and Chengdu Momo. This game will be a Chinese only game and might not even get a Western release. It's like how Digimon Soul Chaser never really got a Western release and was only available in its original language. So for those who wish to play this game, you'll have to play it in Chinese, which is a shame. We also have some gameplay footage of this game, but I won't show it in this video as I make the video copyright claim by Toei and I won't take any chances. So I'll put the links of the gameplay in the description down below if you wish to see it. And that's the end of the video. Which Jogress Digimon is your favorite? I love both and it's 
a tough choice. Each are special in their own way. Ragnar Lord Mon is special for its edgy and badass design. While I love Raphael Simon's design because of its simplicity and elegant style. And I like that it's a tragic Digimon that only lives for a couple of days. Either way, both Digimon are greatly designed and I cannot wait to see what more new Digimon designs will be made in the future. Thanks for watching and if you guys have not please subscribe. I also wish to thank these guys for supporting my Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.